It's Rich back with you for another video here in Long Beach. I'm with Craig Owings and his Pitts S2A that he does some training in, Sunburst Aviation, and we're going to take it up for a ride. We sold the Waco, so I'm out of tailwheel currency. Craig's going to uh, is going to take me through a couple of Pitts landings. I've been around Pitts specials almost my as long as I can remember, and it's uh, been a special airplane for me. I'm excited to fly this. How'd you get started with Pitts? So I was lucky. I got to hang around Torrance Airport a lot growing up. My parents were pilots and I got to fly in a Stearman and the guy on the field, Dick McAdams, had a Pitts S2A, got to fly in that a few times as a youth and it was always the sexiest plane for me. Yes, yeah, such a cool airplane. We're going to have some fun, go fly it, take you along for the ride. One Golf Echoes hold short to 26 or 8. Uh, any chance we can get three full stops? Just one Golf Echo, stand by sun request. That's encouraging. Yeah. It's like mommy didn't say no. I'll take the maybe. The way I teach lifting the tail for takeoff, I mean, this plane, you don't even have to lift the tail yeah. if you don't want to. Yeah. Okay. It'll fly right off. Echo, make right close traffic, runway 26 right, clear for takeoff. 26 right, clear for takeoff, right traffic, one golf echo. All right, ready? Ready? mixture up or you want to leave it out? Yeah, mixture in. Bring the stick all the way back. We'll want to get a little bit of speed before we bring it up. There's a left crosswind, but I find in this airplane it uses so little controls. If you think about it like that, then you end up using too much. So. Yeah. But just be aware, you might need to attach power coming in all the way. It's gonna bring it up slow to kind of get used to it. And go forward on the stick. And go to climb at 100. Go ahead and start a right turn. So 58 and 3, so kill advised about 5 minutes. And we'll just leave the prop full once you get up to pattern altitude about 20, 21 inches. I tend to cheat a little higher than the pattern just because our glide is so poor. Sometimes I'll come in at 1,500 feet and they'll say like, hey, you're at the twin altitude pattern. And I say, well, I identify as a twin. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. I glide, I glide like a twin, so I should fly the outer altitude like a twin. That's right. And I only got one engine, so. He's going to call the base. I got 20 inches. Everything looks good back here. Props in. Mixture's in. So you're going to want to hold the nose up a little higher. With the symmetrical wing, we just need a little bit of that positive angle. Kilo, the one golf echo, turn base for the 268, clear to land. Clear to land, 268, turn base, one golf echo. So go ahead and bring the nose up, keep us at 100, our best glide, and just keep the power in, and we'll just... Uh, one golf echo, clear touch and go, running 268. Oh, touch and go. Touch and go, 268, one golf echo. Right so keep, traffic, keep the traffic, altitude traffic. in here, and just keep us at 100. Just the intention. And okay, we'll and just go ahead and... Could, so we'll just go left at the river. There we go, just keep us on a okay, nice okay, angle okay, here. That's fine. Creature and then... Right traffic, extend down. Go ahead right and bring the power down back down. And then keep the nose up at 100. Resist the urge to see over the nose and just all, just use a little bit of slip here and just try to keep that, let's get the power all the way to idle, there we go. So we're just going to keep it at 100 and keep this slip and we want to stay on this side of the center line, right, so we don't lose any side of the runway. So we'll come out of a little bit of the slip here now, come out of the slip some. Who's number two? Alright, there we go, let the nose come down, let the nose come down. And then level it off, level it off. Hold it, squeeze it back. A little bit of left crosswind. I'm only two six right south of fifty eight nine three. All right, and then Kirchner stick and power come up together. And down one Kirchner five forty. And then we're at flying airspeed. There we go. Yay! Not too bad. We need to get full stops though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all right. We'll do it again. Yeah. I'm just glad we can stay in the pattern. Yeah. All right, bring us up to a hundred. 
And so I keep the nose down when we're, you started to want to pull the nose up and I had yeah. to keep the stick forward. Yeah. If you start to pull the nose up, we get too slow. And you revert back to like moving the stick. And like you said, you don't need to move the stick. Just yeah. a little bit of pressure. Well, the big thing is once you start lifting that nose, very quickly your speed will get to be 85. And at 85, not only do you not have much authority to arrest the sink rate, but the other problem is now, now you're going to be, to arrest the sink rate, you're going to have the, the mains a foot off the ground. Yeah. Because these gear are so short. And so the guys that teach a lot of landings in these, like uh, that's the primarily what they do, they like the longer gear. One golf echo, 10 down. And so you talked about the rocker, the difference with this, is a straight left arm can get you out of trouble. <laughs> you can be pretty ridiculously slow and low to the ground in this and straighten that, that left arm and as long as you're putting in some right rudder, yeah. you're going to fly right out of it. And that's the thing I tell people is, if you fly this airplane long enough, your left arm and your right foot become and I miss that conjoined. And so we'll keep our thousand feet until we're over that golf course. Yeah. We're not going to come down at all. And the thing people are amazed about is how much this airplane slips. Yeah. People all the time. When I first started flying here off a of 26 left, the tower multiple times had asked me, one Gulf Echo, are you going to land? Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'd say, yeah, I'm about to cut the power and land right now because I come down like a manhole yeah. cover. Yeah. Okay, I got the guy to follow. I got him out there, but lost him. Yeah, you just have to S-turn to be able to see him. With no one on the left runway, we can diverge a little bit over this direction. Yeah, I don't want to go too far right. I think he's in pretty tight. Yeah, yeah, I see him. He's in pretty tight. Yeah, I'd keep coming to the left a little bit. And let's try to slow us down a little bit. There we go, yeah. Do you prefer to slip left or right? Uh, probably right. Tower okay. Cat 80 is ready to go 2-6 right now. He's oh, not. He's, oh, he's, yeah, he's a touch and go. Yeah, All right, he's off. He's off. I'm going to slip left. left turn the river so what we're doing here is getting into a little bit of a blind area. Now come back. Come back that way, okay. November 4. All right, so keep the nose down. Don't start bringing the nose down until we're real close. So keep the nose down, keep the nose down, come out of the slip all the way. And now let's try to hold it off, hold it off. Power all the way back to idle. Let it come down, let it come down, let it come down, let it come down. I'm going to put a little bit of power here. Light, light. All right, let's put the power in. We were just a little bit off of the ground. I think yeah. we were a little bit higher than you thought. Yep. And that's the thing about this attitude with the shorter gear there is it's, if, if that happens and we start to flare too high, we end up needing to get power to arrest the sink rate and let the nose come back down to get to that three-point attitude. Yep. All right, so my comments aside on that, you're doing fantastic, because this, like you said before you went up, is one of the hardest airplanes to land yeah. in the business. Yeah, and so, and, and the, you know, the slipping thing yeah. is, you know, it's, it just takes Number a little bit. One golf echo for traffic, make a short approach from a 2-6 right, cleared for the option. Short approach, cleared for the option, 2-6 right, one golf echo. This time, your last one? Yeah, it'll be it. Uh, We'll do, uh, we'll full stop this one for one go. Roger, thank you. A little bit of less slip here, good. And then the nose down, keep that 100, there you go. And then come out of the slip here, because we're getting a little bit. And what we're ending up problem with here is getting a little bit, having to maneuver low to the ground too much. So yeah. we're getting a little bit of power here. All right, bringing the power out, out to idle. And then just hold it right there, hold it, squeeze, just pressure, just pressure, hold it, hold it, we need to come down more still. We need to put right rudder. Uh, leave the chair, You are stepped up. So yeah, so the, what I'm seeing on the first landings is that we're just having a tendency to be flaring a little high. Yeah, you're yeah. thinking you're lower than you are, and so just, um, yeah, no. for this next one, just keep in mind that uh, let the plane come down a little bit, a little yeah, bit lower. I'm definitely flaring high, for sure, wanting to flare high. Clear of two, six, I'm, right, not re uh, I'm not really re uh, resisting the urge to pull the nose up. Just the 4240 Long Beach Ground. You're just used to the Waco. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Waco's more, you know, the way, the best way to land a Waco is to bring the airplane down in a wheel landing configuration and, yeah. and then just get it right over the runway and just pull the power back. Just settle it on a wheel landing, plant the nose gear, let it roll out, and, uh, right get a little break, get it on the tail, nice and slow, and so you're done. Easy. Okay,
back on the ground after a few landings, which is the most, probably the most difficult part of the pits is getting it on the ground. And now we're gonna go out and do a little uh, aerobatics. It's been a while since I've flown any, aer any aerobatics, so Craig's gonna take me through. And uh, what do you think? Yeah, so like you said, you know, it's the most challenging part of this airplane is taking off and landing and the aerobatics in the sky, it basically does it on its own. It's a lot easier to fly than a decathlon or other airplanes. If you get into aerobatic competitions, it, you almost feel like you're cheating in this plane. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I haven't done aerobatics for a while, so looking forward to it. Look at the clouds over the yeah. ocean. Saw that. Start right at TV there. Yeah, get a lot of blanket of that over there. So we'll be we'll be doing aerobatics over the clouds today. A little bit of right rudder there. Yeah. See how sensitive they are there? Yeah. It's so sensitive, that's what we're talking about. When you're coming out of the spins, you can think they're neutral, but they're not. And when you start pulling out of the spin from a dive or pulling out from a loop, you got to just feel that butt, feel if you got the weight on both butt cheeks, and glance down at the ball just to confirm if you're having a hard time feeling it. Yeah. This plane is actually so sensitive that I have a hard time feeling the discoordination in a Cessna. Yeah. People right. kind of laugh. They go, gee, you know, you're a pits pilot. You should be more coordinated in an Cessna. And I go, well, I'm off center line, and my airplane just feels so different. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost not sensitive enough to feel it in a Cessna when it's uncoordinated. Go ahead and just make an S turn to the right here and back to the left, and we'll just kind of look around underneath us. I got the one right below. And there's going to be a guy passing 900 below right off our left. So the fun thing is, let's go ahead and stay on the I controls with me here, okay? I got him, so here's the fun thing. We can just clear traffic like this. Yeah. All right, you have the airplane. Got it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a lot easier to clear like that. Yeah, that's true. It's a lot better visibility. So if you get us up to about 130 miles an hour or above, that's a good, uh, good speed to do a roll. Of course, a little faster just rolls a little faster. All right, there's no one straight ahead of us. You ready for a roll? Yep. Do you want to just go for it? Yeah, let me just try it here. Just tell right. me when, I'm, when you think I'm pitched up good. Okay, good, yeah. And then neutralize the stick. Pull forward on the stick a little bit. Woo! Pretty sloppy. Here, go ahead and stay on the controls with me. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just bring the stick up, neutralize, and then all the way to the left. To your airplane. You just didn't quite go forward enough on the stick. Just a little bit more forward pressure before the roll. Didn't neutralize enough? Yeah, just a little bit more forward. And as you're pulling back here, make sure you're not doing any aileron. Good, now all the way to the left. <laughs> and it's like, you know, even airplane to airplane, you know, could turn us down just a hair. You know, Cessnas are more like fly all the same. Yeah. But a pit, being the way they're built, yeah. each one flies a little different. I've flown my plane with a guy who's a very accomplished, very well respected pits pilot, and he couldn't fly it as good as me just because it's a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. Oh, they're so in finely field. tuned. It doesn't take much to yeah. change them. All right. Why don't you take me through a loop? I'll All follow right. you. Okay. So follow me through. So we're going to put the nose down. So basically, you can loop at 150 or so, but it's nice to get a little bit of extra airspeed. This gives you a little bit more margin for error. So we'll go. Give me a little bit of nose down trim. All right. Good. All right. Look to the left. So we're going to do about a 3G pull here. And as we get upside down here, we're going to look down at the ocean. And kind of just let the airplane fall through, let the airplane accelerate, looking down over the nose, and we're going to do a 3G pull. There's three, three and a half to level flight. You have the airplane. Okay. You want to do one? Yeah, follow me through, though. Yeah, sure, sure. Push forward. Let's get a little bit more speed to 170 or so, 180, give you more to play with. 
That's good there. Go ahead and look at your rudder. Good. And then pull back to three G's. Pull a little harder, a little harder. Good right there. Not too much. And then just let it kind of float over here. A little bit of watch your wings. A little bit of rudder there. And then just let the airspeed build on up. And then just start pulling back. Pull back. Pull, 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 pull. There we go. Yay! Loop. Pretty good. All right. Turn us around the other direction. We got a guy off our right wing. 500 below, two miles. You should see him right over in there. Got him. Got him. Okay, you were going to do a uh, Lomshavak. Oh, you no. want to do a Lomshavak? No, no, we were going to do a... Uh, you want a vertical snap or a vertical snap? So we're going to do a spin going straight up. Yep. People are surprised about that. Yep. So, all right, so we'll get like 160, airplane. my airplane. Yep. We're going to pull the vertical, look off the left. Juliet is 5 south of point permit, 2400, heading northbound, back to 21. And pull on out. Sure, okay. All right. How you doing? Good. You have the aircraft? Yeah, that was cool. I mean, you know, when you're not used to that, you kind of yeah. lose everything. There. Yeah, go ahead and put us in a bit of a climb. You were talking about doing some inverted flight, yeah? Yeah. How are you feeling? I feel good. Okay, I have the airplane. Your airplane. Go ahead and tighten your belts up. Make sure you you're, uh, feel like your circulation is about to cut off. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, the shoulders you just want to have, uh, you don't want to be compressing the spine. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do a little belt check here, okay? Just a temporary and then roll it back there. Yep. All right. Ready? You're going to follow me through yeah, or you want to do it? it? You do it. I All just right. want to make sure I don't. This uh, headset's secured. All right. All right, so we're going to roll inverted. And we're going to push the stick forward, and we're going to hold 4,500 feet here. And so there's our inverted flight. So if we do some left aileron and some right rudder, we can do a coordinated inverted turn. How you feeling? Okay. Look up at the camera. <laughs> and then we can come back to the other direction. How you feeling? Good. And then I'll just roll us on out. Wow. Yeah, it takes a, it, you know, it takes a little bit of uh, orientation there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you have the aircraft? Monkey. Keep us in a climb. Okay. My aircraft. We have some uh, hole in the clouds up here. How do you feel about an inverted spin? Uh, yeah, let's try it. I mean, yeah. why not? Let's go ahead and keep our nose up a little bit. We'll just climb up just a little bit more like that attitude there. All right, we're at a point in time where we have no one within three miles of us and a thousand feet, so we're looking pretty good here. You ready? Yep. You got the airplane? Yeah. Right, you can follow me through. I'll follow you through. So I'm going to roll us inverted. We're going to hold our altitude. We're going to pull our power back. And make sure you look up at the camera for this and have some fun, huh? So we're going to keep pulling this, slowing us down, and go some right rudder, and now we're inverted spinning. Woo-hoo! There we go, opposite rudder, pull the stick back to center, pull the power, and now grunt through the G's. Ah! Nice. All right, you have the aircraft? I got the aircraft. How you feel? I feel good. A little, little, a eh, little, you know, I would say dizzy, but just short of dizzy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, you got the blood rushing to your head, then coming out of your I head. You know, the thing is, on a pole, I didn't feel bad at all. You want to see a series of right-hand snap rolls? Okay. You feeling okay? Yeah, I think I can handle that. Okay, so here we go with our snap rolls, okay? Okay. So we're going to bring our nose up a little bit. We're going to find an area where our speed looks good. And there's our good. How you doing? That one got me a little dizzy. Just for a second. <laughs> what else should we do? Uh, um, we haven't done just a regular upright spin, have we? No. All right, let's keep the nose up a little bit. Let's climb a little bit. So as we were talking about on the ground, you know, we still get yeah. these people getting the stall spin accidents. Yeah, right. We had one over at Torrance not too long ago. Um, lost a couple guys, and um, gets a bunch of people every year, that's yeah. for sure. 
And so, you know, the, my whole thing is the FAA and the companies want to come out with angle of attack indicators and all this other technology to help promote spin avoidance. Right. And so my, my argument is let's not do spin avoidance, let's get really comfortable on spins. Yeah. And really get comfortable on flying the airplane on the edge. And so that's what I like to teach in this airplane. Yep. When you did spins in the past, did you do any accelerated or flat spins? No. All right, so I'm going to start us out as a regular spin, then add some acceleration and flattening in it. Okay. Because you'll really see uh, how quick it goes. So when we put the stick forward in a spin, it accelerates it because of how the elevator affects the rudder, rudder shield, and rudder drag, and it goes faster. As the spin goes faster, like a ball on a string, the nose will rise, it'll naturally flatten, All right. and we'll use some opposite aileron as well, so it's left, left rudder, right aileron to flatten it even more. And then the only way to get out of that spin, you can't get out of it with opposite rudder. You have to bring the stick full back and neutral a ailerons to get that inertia down to be able to overcome it with opposite rudder. Right. All right, so we're good on our traffic. Power's coming back to idle. And so I don't want to bring the nose up to a ridiculous angle. We're just going to hold our hold altitude. It. Yeah. 4600, 4600. It's going to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And then once we get back, we want full lap stick, full left rudder. So now we're starting to spin. So now if I go opposite aileron and go forward on the stick, are you holding the stick? No. There we go. That's going to be accelerated. Then we got to come back, opposite aileron, opposite rudder. There we go. And then add the power and pull out. So you can see when you accelerate it, yeah. you get a lot of inertia behind it. You've really got to put in the control inputs to get it to unaccelerate in order to get back out of it. Yeah, that's that's pretty fast. Yeah, you're disorienting fast yeah. if you're not used yeah, to it. Yeah, you feel like you're just spinning around like on a on a top. And is that, how I describe you know, it. And you think about somebody that's you know that's not used to that at all, and they put an airplane in a spin. Now, granted, in a 172 or 182, it's going to be a lot slower. They right. never may never get flat, but. Well, they're only certificated for the uh, incipient spins. Yeah. They're not shown to, to, de to recover from a developed spin that's yeah. an auto-rotation. And, and as soon as it starts rotating fast like that, it's there, there's really no way to... Right. Most of them are... They don't even probably get a full rotation if they're low to the ground, you know? But that, that point... Or those airplanes spin so slow. To the numbers. There was a uh, time that SoCal was so busy back when they had the staffing problems, like... You know, a year and a half ago. Yeah. And people were calling in, and SoCal said, "Everyone calling, stand by." Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was out a couple times and heard that. Information November. You have the airplane. I have the airplane. We'll go ahead and bring our power out now. And so I don't want to cross that center line. I've almost done it, but if I just put us into more slip, yep. You see, how I've not crossed that center line quite. Yeah. And I'm going to let the airplane come down, come down, and then I'm going to pull us out of this. Now I've got left wing down here. I'm going to hold us off, 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 hold us off. Stick all the way back. Yep. Okay, back on the ground after that. Uh being humbled by the pits on the landings and also uh, some aerobatics. I actually felt pretty good. I mean, I haven't done aerobatics, like I said, in like a while outside of a loop and roll in the WACO. And uh, that was fun. Yeah, no, you did fantastic. I mean, this is, like we talked about, the hardest airplane to land in general aviation. Yeah. You haven't done it in years. You know, you're doing great with that. Aerobatics, you tolerated everything. Yeah. Like a champ, inverted flat spins, right side up flat spins, snap rolls, inverted flights. So now you're, it was, you're, it you're an A plus student. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And I got to tell you, if you're going to, if you love airplanes and flying, it's like you said, you know, uh, I don't remember exactly how you phrased it, but this is really flying, you know, straight and level and cruising along is fun, but if you really enjoy flying, you really got to get in an airplane like this and go out and, uh, 
it'll humble you, but it'll make you a better pilot for sure. And to experience some of those, like a flat spin and a spin and being able to orient yourself is really a safety thing. That's why they make flight instructors do it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why, because the thing is too, when you're flight instructing, students are gonna put you into spins. Yeah. So you could be up with a friend. I'm gonna let my friend fly the airplane. Before you know it, they do some yeah. extreme input you don't expect, and you're into a spin that yeah. you wouldn't have gotten yourself into. And so what I had mentioned before talking about it, it's kind of like if you're a big swimmer, you want to come over and use my pool. And I say, yeah, you, you want to work out in your pool. Come on over to my pool. And you get in in your dog paddle. Right, right. And I say, well, why don't you learn any other strokes? Yeah. I don't know. I just All I do is dog paddle. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole other strokes, all other sorts of other flying to do. Yeah, and I consider myself to be pretty good on the rudders, but I was I was <laughs> all over the place. Anyway, uh, you you got a website, Sunburst Aviation. Highly recommend coming out and taking a ride in the pits with Craig. And thanks for watching.